part one, when they say show that something is a solution, this is actually a really important point. What does it mean that something is a solution of an equation? How would you define that? Like something is a solution because what? Yeah, it works. A solution means this thing will actually be a true statement. Okay? So therefore all that's required is to actually just test it out. So the way I would do this is for part one, I would say the left hand side equals, and I'm going to substitute in x equals a. Okay, so let's just quickly do that. 1 minus a squared, what am I going to get here? 2a? Is that right? Minus 2a, 1 minus a squared. Agreed? That's the same thing, just written in reverse order. So that's 0 as required. So the only thing that I could do to this line to make it less of a fudge is to write this. Because apart from that, that is a direct rewriting of that line up there with x equals a. Right? Um, I suppose you could say when x equals a, the left hand side equals da 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 da, but um, I, I think it is patently obvious that when you subtract something from itself, you're good. It's, it's going to be zero. So that's fine. That's OK. Part two. So I want to show that this is true. Now, when I have a look at this line here, I have an idea in my head of what to do with it. But I wonder what jumps out at you. Like, where would you even begin to try and prove that this was the case? Any suggestions? Expand what? OK, so when you have a look at this and this, can you see that there's so many of the same pieces, right? Um, both of them are equal to 0. Both of them are quadratics in x, right? You see how there's x squared terms and x, and then there's a constant term. It, this is just a version of this with the x squared sort of disentangled, OK? So I am just going to need to expand this guy and write it. This is general form, OK? Um, if you recognize it, here is your um, ax squared. It just happens that your a is 2a. Uh, here's your bx, right? And then here's your c, this whole thing that's the constant term. Do you need me to do that, or are you OK for us? We can move on. OK, so that's just algebra. That's just some um, expansion. So having proven that this is the case, the other root is that thing. Hmm. OK, sure. So. Hmm. So, so you've got some choices here, right? Um, is, how much is this question worth? Is it two or three? Two? Uh, two. Two. Yeah, I thought so. Um, so I'm actually, I'm going to give you a second, OK? Because if I'm thinking about this question correctly, there's at least three ways you could do this question. The reason why I'm pausing and wanting you guys to have a go is I don't know which is the fastest yet. I'd actually have to give them a go. And then I'd look and I'm like, oh, this is five lines, this is eight, whatever, OK? Um, let's just throw out there, so one suggestion was sum and product of roots. That's an idea. What else could you possibly do? Say that again. Quadratic formula, because if you know one root, well, we know that the quadratic formula is a way to find roots. That's also fine. What else could you do? Are those our only two ideas? You do long division. Yes, you. Shan, you have such a, a talent for like, what is the most inefficient way that I could, it's like, I have to, I have to kill this fly. Has anyone got a bazooka? Okay. Um, sure, why not? Okay, so what I'm going to suggest is noticing that we just were asked to get this thing into general form. Okay, I'm going to suggest that sum and product of roots is a good idea because um, sum and product of roots, sum and product are very, very easily stated things, right? Because this is just going to be minus b on a. This is just going to be c on a, right? So let me give you 30 to 60 seconds to have a play with that. I'm not even going to tell you what they are, because I think that would give it away, and see what emerges and see if you can get the answer. Okay. Um, you've got sum and product of roots. Now, because they're quite easy to work out, I wouldn't be surprised if you just worked out what they were, OK? Um, However, I'm actually going to suggest to you, because overall it's an important strategy, even though here it doesn't make that much of a difference, you should always be searching for a quicker way. If you've got like, oh, I've got five things I could try, if you can work out which one's the most useful first, that's a good idea, isn't it? Now, have a look at the re result they're trying to prove, right? Do you notice 
if you look carefully at this term, do you notice that you pretty much have all those pieces nestled inside the previous part? Have a look. For example, see that 1 plus a squared? It's, it's literally directly above. It's right there. Okay? And the 2a, that looks suspicious as well. Right? Now, this is c, and this is um, a, uh, the, the coefficient of x squared. So therefore, I'm thinking this is going to be more useful to me. Like, it's a more direct path. There's nothing wrong with working out alpha plus beta, but we all know that it's not like you've got time to sit around twiddling your thumbs in an extension exam. Okay? So therefore, I'm just going to go straight to the product of roots and cross my fingers. Okay? So alpha times beta equals, here comes c on a, um, negative a 1 plus a squared on 2a. Agreed? Now, um, it's not a bad idea to start simplifying things here, but I don't need to just yet, because there's actually something in this equation that I haven't quite simplified. I've done the right-hand side, but what's the left-hand side? Yeah, so alpha and beta, right, are the two roots, but I already know what one of the roots is. It's a. Right? That's, that's why we did this in part one. So therefore, this left-hand side, I'm going to write as a times beta. Is that, a, is that a right? Like I'm just, it doesn't matter which one's which, okay, just labels. So you can see here, this is like the easiest two marks in the whole paper. Look at the left and right-hand side. Just divide both through by a. Cancel, cancel. The other root, that's what beta is, is minus that on that as required. Okay. Now, I said that it's the easiest two marks in the, in the paper. Um, the, the, the actual number crunching, the, the algebra is easy, but seeing that you need to use this and then do something to the left-hand side, because you don't do that very often, do you? Okay. Um, that's not common. The question is trying to push you in this direction. Have a look. What is the clue the question gives you? Look back, right back to the start. Yeah, like they didn't... That's weird, isn't it? When do you ever get asked to do something like that? And the fact that it's part one, part two, part three should indicate to you, oh, right, like this will be useful for me later. Okay.